This video is brought to you by Battleaxe. Hey, it's Jake, and I'm very excited to announce Schmear, the latest freebie from Battleaxe that allows you to apply animation smear frames to basically anything that you'd like to inside of After Effects really easily and intuitively. And I'll show you exactly how it works. So it's actually just a preset that uses the echo effect. I'm gonna go into my animation presets. I installed it in the user presets folder, so check the link in the description to find where you can download this preset. And then to install it, I find it's really easy to just select one of the presets that are already in After Effects effects come up to this little menu and say reveal in Explorer that will open up the directory where you can paste that FFX file the preset then just come up to here say refresh list that will refresh your presets list and you won't have to even restart After Effects. It'll then show up right inside. So here we have Schmear. Now I have this animation of a Newton's Cradle at 24 frames per second. So a traditional frame rate, but there's no motion blur. There's nothing in here really showing that these balls are moving pretty quickly, especially between here and here. I mean, look at the distance from this frame to the next frame. A lot of distance is covered and I'm not really emphasizing that motion at all. Now. Traditionally, smear frames are what you would use to create that sense of motion between two frames of very fast movement. It's basically like motion blur before there was motion blur. Since animators were originally drawing these motions by hand, they had to come up with creative and unique ways to emphasize this motion because there was no motion blur like we have the motion blur switch right here in After Effects. So what they would do sometimes is smear out that frame, making this kind of elongated blobby version of whatever object was moving between those two frames. So I'm gonna show you exactly how that works with Schmear. So I'm just gonna grab that preset and apply it to that ball. And it's gonna give me the Schmear pseudo effect, which is the controls for this rig, and the echo effect. This is all being driven by the echo effect. It's really nothing fancy. It's just very convenient to be able to adjust it and dial it in to be used as a smearing tool exactly the way that you want to. So right here on this frame, you can see this long trail smear frame between these two frames right here. And it's only showing up on that frame because this rig is responsive to how fast the object is moving or changing in order to generate those smear frames when you want them to. So let's take a look at the controls. First, we have the smear length, and this is a percentage from zero to 100. This is literally the distance between the current frame and the previous frame. So at 100%, I'm seeing a smear from this frame right here all the way to there, but I might wanna dial that back a bit to maybe 75%, and then it's not going to smear that entire distance, just 75% of it, but you can dial that in to whatever you want. As I do that, the number of echoes down here is adjusting. So Schmear is doing the complicated math behind the scenes that's really clever to fill in the number of echoes that you actually need to make a trail the length that you want. So I'll just leave that up to say 75%. And then we'll look at the distance threshold. This is what controls how fast your object has to move in order for a smear to actually appear. So if I back up to a frame, maybe this one right here, where we don't have a smear, and I dial that distance threshold down, eventually Eventually, we're going to see that smear taking place. So now things are going to smear more often. If I play this back, in fact, why don't I just dial this all the way back down to zero, and now even the slightest bit of movement should generate a smear. And if I play this, you can see now this sphere is really just smearing all over the place. So you can dial that in and think of it almost like a shutter speed control on a camera. It's dialing in how much of that smearing is actually showing up, depending on how fast your object is moving. Finally, we have the count multiplier. And what this is going to do, I'll zoom in nice and close so you can see that every one of these echoes stacked next to each other is actually kind of stepping. It's segmented and you can see each individual copy. But the count multiplier is just going to literally multiply the number of echoes by whatever value you have set in here. So if I change the count multiplier to two, it jumps from 25 echoes up to 50 echoes. So you wanna be careful with this number because say you were already generating 400 echoes, which is not out of the question and you change that multiplier to 10 then you're going to have 4,000 echoes after effects is probably going to freeze up on you and pretty much crash so always check the number of echoes before you increase the count multiplier but this goes all the way up to 40 which in some cases you may need to crank up that high. The good news is the echo effect is set to zero echoes anytime that it's not being triggered by the distance threshold. So if it's not moving fast enough, there are no echoes and you will see no render hit. 
and on those frames where it is being implemented, it's only happening for those couple of frames. So even though it might take a few seconds to render a single frame, it's really not that big of a deal since it's usually only one or two frames at a time, or the motion isn't that complicated and it doesn't need that many echoes to actually pull off the effect. Now, I like the way that that smear looks, so what I wanna do is transfer that smear to the other side of the Newton's Cradle. So I'll just grab that first ball, copy both of these effects, and paste them on the second ball, and now both of them are going to smear in either direction. And I've got this cool animation with automatic smears happening between those two spheres, and it's very easy to dial in the look exactly the way that I want to. Now what I wanna point out is that this was entirely made up of shape layers, and the echo effect actually works really well with shape or any vector layers, unlike most other effects. When you apply an effect, especially distortion effects, to a shape layer, it usually doesn't do what you want it to. In this case, it actually does. Where it doesn't work so well is when you apply it to a pre-comp. So I'm gonna jump over to this comp where I have another character, and he's really squishy, squashy, and he's just bouncing up and down in my comp. Now he lives within a pre-comp. All of his artwork is split up in individual shape layers, but since I pre-composed him, After Effects is just seeing it as a pre-comp or a footage item in After Effects. So if I add the smear effect to it, I'm not going to see any kind of motion trails, no smear frames at all, because the echo effect doesn't actually see any of that motion the way that the footage items are being interpreted by After Effects, unless I collapse transform that pre-comp. As soon as I do that, echoes are gonna be calculated, the smear will take place, and I can play this back now. It'll take a few seconds to calculate those smear frames, but now I've got these smears happening exactly the way that I want them to. Now, all this motion is being driven in this comp, if I had animated him bouncing up and down inside of a pre-comp, there would be no way for After Effects to see that motion and Schmear wouldn't be able to calculate that motion to generate those smear frames. So be aware of that. You can't you apply Schmear to a pre-comp and have it smear what's inside the pre-comp. All the motion has to take place in the same space as the echo effect. Now on this particular example, I have this black outline on my character, which because it's so thin, when it's smeared, let me back up to a smear frame, you can really see all of that segmentation in the number of echoes. That's exactly why we have the count multiplier. So I'm gonna increase this up to say five. Now the number of echoes is set to 98, so this is almost gonna calculate 500 echoes. It will take a few seconds, but just like that, it's able to smooth all of that out. And I could push this even a little bit further, but honestly, I think this is okay. So feel free to dial that in as much as you want. Just again, be aware, increasing that count multiplier even by one is going to exponentially increase the number of echoes that are being generated by the echo effect. So don't crash your computer, save early, save often, as EJ Hassenfratz would say, and just go crazy having fun making these smears. Uh, uh, I probably would dial back the smear length on this one a little bit. So maybe again, instead of 100, I'll dial this back to 60 and maybe turn the distance threshold up to say 80 so it's not producing quite as many smears and the motion has to be a little bit faster for them to show up. But there's my little bouncy squishy square guy. And by the way, this After Effects project file is included with the presets download so you can mess around with these animations if you want something to test it out on and just go nuts with. All right, here's another example, my character Bonk Bonk here, and I wanted to show you this one because I applied Schmear to very specific parts of the character. Again, this is within a pre-comp, but you'll notice that I don't have collapse transformations enabled on this pre-comp because I actually did the smearing inside of the rig where the artwork lives. And I did that because I wanted to be able to smear just the head elements, none of the body, not the legs, just those specific parts, the horn here, the eyes, and the head. So if I just give myself a little bit more room here and I unshy all these layers so you can see the artwork, I've just applied the schmear effect to the mouth, eyes, and head so that I can be very precise with where those smears show up. But managing four different instances and dialing in the properties that I wanted for this smear for four different layers is not very fun. It's a lot of going back and forth, copying and pasting values. Instead, what I did is made a null object and applied schmear to it. Now, a null object doesn't render, it doesn't do anything on its own, but it can be used to hold values that you can reference with expressions. So applying schmear to it isn't going to give me any kind of speed information, but it is going to allow me to then copy this schmear effect with property links. So I had that selected, went up to edit, copy with property links, 
and then I pasted that on top of the schmear effect that was already here on these four layers. And that just linked up all of these properties with expressions. So now whenever I change one of the controls in the null object control layer, all instances of the schmear effect will be adjusted as well. So I could change this down to say 50% instead of 75. And you'll see here and here, every instance that I have copied with property links has also updated. And that's a real time saver when dialing in that smear look. All right, finally, I have one more example with Bonk Bonk, and this one has a single smear frame. Now, I did not apply the smears in the pre-comp, so I needed to collapse the transformations. The smear and echo are on this pre-comp right here. But let me play this back for you so you can see what it looks like. What I've done is just moved that layer from the center of the comp to the left side of the comp over just two frames, and it allowed me to generate that big, long, stretchy smear that just looks really nice. Even though I'm not applying it to specific elements, the echo effect still does a really good job of smearing out and giving trails on all these individual elements of my character. And that's because of the echo operator. By default, it's set to maximum, which prioritizes the lighter colors over the darker ones. But I could have changed this to minimum, and then the darker colors are gonna take priority over the lighter colors, and it'll change the way that your smear looks. So that's a really great benefit of echo. It allows you to get different looks and be very specific with how your smears actually appear. Now, I prefer the maximum look where the lighter colors take priority. That's why it's set to that uh, as the default in the preset, but you can change that to whatever you'd like. But what that allows you to do is communicate that really fast movement, even though there's just that single frame being shown for my character moving off the screen. But that's about it for Schmear. One final thing that we've done at Battleaxe is made an icon for KBAR. So KBAR is a third-party extension for After Effects that allows you to apply scripts, expressions, presets, very simply with a single button. And we have icons for all of the tools that we have at Battleaxe. So we went ahead and created this bagel with cream cheese in the middle for Schmear. I've set it up to automatically apply the preset. So if I just shift, double click on the circle to make a perfect circle and scale it down a little bit, then I can just click on the Schmear button. It will apply Schmear. And I always have easy access to making easy animation smears. And again, that icon as well as this project file and the preset itself is all included in the download. You can find that link in the description. So go check it out. Go wild, having fun making smears. And show us what you make. Tag both battleaxe.co and Jake in Motion on Instagram so we can see it. We love to share the work that's made with our tools. And we really hope that you enjoy Schmear. Thanks for watching this video. And I'll see you in the next one. Ed, 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 Ed,